Pedro Fages 1734 to 1794, Catalan, per Fages I Belita, was a Spanish soldier, explorer, first lieutenant governor of the Californias under Gaspar de Portola, and second 1770 to 74 and fifth 1782 to 91 governor of Alta California. Topic: Career. Topic: Phages was born in Gusona, Lirida, Lida Province, Catalonia, Spain. In 1762 he entered the Light Infantry in Catalonia in 1762 and joined Spain's invasion of Portugal during the Seven Years' War. In May 1767 Phages, commissioned as a lieutenant in the newly formed Free Company of Volunteers of Catalonia, set sail from Cadiz along with a company of Light Infantry, voyaging to New Spain Mexico. He and his men served under Domingo Elizondo in Sonora. Topic. Voyage from Baja California to San Diego Topic. In 1769, Fages was selected by Visitador Inspector General José de Galvez to lead the ship-borne portion of the Gaspar de Portola-led expedition to found San Diego, California. Lieutenant Fages sailed from Guaymas to the Baja California port of La Paz. Then on January 9, 1769, he boarded the galleon San Carlos, captained by Vicente Vila and bound for San Diego. Also on board were Franciscan friar Fernando Perrin, engineer and cartographer Miguel Costanzo, surgeon Pedro Pratt, and 25 soldiers under Fages' command along with a crew of sailors. After sailing nearly 200 miles 320 kilometers beyond San Diego due to cartography errors, the San Carlos doubled back south. It finally arrived in San Diego Bay on April 29, with scurvy-ridden troops and crewmen. Topic. Interaction with Kumye Indians Topic. Upon recovering from the ill effects of the voyage, Phages set about carrying out the instructions of José de Galvez, along with Miguel Costanzo, he reconnoitred the port and inland areas of San Diego, exploring especially today's Mission Valley. In his letter reporting to Galvez, Phages observed of the local Cumia Indians, they appear to be docile and alert. We have made very good friends with them and we are never lacking some little rabbits, hares, and fish that they bring to us. We give them some glass beads. But they value very highly any kind of cloth. No matter how poor it might be. Since in exchange for some that I had, I received some furs and nets, Costanzo, while branding the Cumye as lazy idlers, noted that they have bestowed great affection upon Don Pedro Fages and they also respect him very much. They have invited him at various times to be with their women, an expression of friendship that the rest have not merited. Costanzo recounts a demonstration Phages arranged to prove the superiority of Spanish firearms, armed with bows and arrows tipped with very sharp flints. The Cumier men initially viewed the Spaniards' guns as simple sticks. Phages ordered a leather target erected at a practical distance. The Indians fired their arrows, which had only a mild effect on the leather. Phages then ordered his best marksmen to shoot at the same target. Upon hearing the noise and seeing the destruction so close at hand, the Indians changed their expressions and some of the more timid ones left, giving very clear signs of their surprise and fear. Topic. Portola expedition up the California coast Topic. On July 14, 1769, Phages set out from San Diego with a party of 74 men on the Portola expedition to locate Monterey Bay. The party included Catalan volunteers, leather-jacketed soldiers, Christian Indians from Baja California, and friars Juan Crespi and Francisco Gomez along with other military officers. During this time he was promoted to captain. Although the party failed to recognize Monterey Bay as they passed it, they explored all the way up the coast to San Francisco. The 74 men returned exhausted to San Diego on January 24, 1770, having had to slaughter and eat their mules on the return trek south. Topic. Second Portola expedition to Monterey Topic. 
In the spring of 1770, Phages joined the second overland Portola expedition from San Diego to Monterey, along with Friar Juan Crespi, twelve Catalan volunteers, seven leather-jacketed soldiers, two muleteers, and five Baja Christian Indians. Aiming to establish a Catholic mission in Monterey, after Portola left California in 1770, Captain Pedro Fages was left in charge of the Presidio of Monterey, as the somewhat independent Lieutenant Governor of California Nueva New California which, in 1770, became part of Las Californias, and was later split from Baja California to become Alta California. In March 1770 Felipe de Bari, in Baja California, was made governor of both Baja and Alta California 1770 But, since Monterey was far away, Fages had free reign to run Alta as acting governor. Topic. Strict discipline to build Monterey Presidio Topic. Taking charge of constructing the Spanish Presidio fort in Monterey, Phages imposed strict discipline on his soldier laborers. He decided the amount of work they had to do in a certain time, harshly punishing soldiers caught resting or rolling a cigarette. Heavy rains punctuated the spring and winter of 1770-1, but Phages permitted no let up in the work. His soldiers had to trudge through mud to the forest to chop wood, then drag their mules out of the mud and head home. They had no chance to wash or mend their clothes during the six-day work week, Phages told them to do that on Sundays. On Sundays, they had to carry a week's supply of wood for Phages' kitchen and fetch their own water from the Carmel River some six miles away, clean their weapons, and pass inspection. This work regime lasted a year and a half. Phages' soldiers viewed him as a tyrant, until complaints by the soldiers persuaded Padre President Junipero Serra to intervene. Serra told Phages that, as a Christian, he had to observe the Sabbath and let his men rest on Sundays. The soldiers raped the Indian women and took them as concubines. At Serra's urging, Phages punished some of the more excessive incidents of sexual abuse, but it did not stop. The two men did not get along and Serra soon made plans to move the mission across the peninsula to Carmel. Weekly rations for the soldiers consisted of two gallons of corn, a pound of beans, a pound of panole, half a pound of panoca, and four pounds of meat. The meat, delivered in barrels from the galleon San Antonio, often proved too putrid to eat. Weevils infested some of the corn and meal. The soldiers supplemented their diet by gathering wild herbs and hunting geese on Sundays. They also traded what goods they had like ponchos, knives, daggers and handkerchiefs for food from the Indians. News of the soldiers' harsh treatment and poor conditions gradually reached Mexico, and Alta California became an undesirable assignment. In late June 1771, Phages wrote to Viceroy Carlos de Croix in Mexico to inform him that the Monterey Presidio had been built, sending along a simplified map. Phages had also started a large vegetable garden with an irrigation supply, and three plots dedicated to growing wheat, barley, rice and beans. He described the Indians of the Monterey, Carmel area as having well-proportioned bodies but feeble spirits. He also described their dress. Nearly all of them go naked, except a few who cover themselves with a small cloak of rabbit or hare skin, which does not fall below the waist. The women wear a short apron of red and white cords twisted and worked as closely as possible, which extends to the knee. Others use the green and dry tule interwoven, and complete their outfit with a deerskin half tanned or entirely untanned, to make wretched underskirts which scarcely serve to indicate the distinction of sex, or to cover their nakedness with sufficient modesty. Topic. Expeditions to San Francisco Bay Topic. In November 1770, Phages led an expedition from Monterey by land to San Francisco Bay. Rather than follow Portola's difficult trail around Monterey Bay to Santa Cruz and along the coast, Phages found an easier route through present-day Salinas and the Santa Clara Valley today. S.U.S. Route 101. Phage's new trail became the preferred route, and missions were later established along that road at Mission San Juan Bautista, Mission Santa Clara and Mission San Jose. From the southern end of the bay, Phages pushed on another day to the farthest camp used by Portola's scouts of the previous year, at San Lorenzo Creek in modern Hayward, on the eastern shore of the bay. 
From there, scouts ranged a few miles farther north, to a point where the view opened up, and they became the first Europeans to see the entrance to the Great Bay although from the opposite side of the bay, a vantage on the slopes above the bay in modern Oakland. Phages set out again in 1772, following his own newly established inland trail north to San Francisco Bay, and accompanied again by Friar Juan Crespi, who kept a daily journal. Continuing along the eastern shore and pushing on past his previous stopping point, Phages saw for himself the entrance to San Francisco Bay, now known as the Golden Gate. The party continued north along San Pablo Bay but was prevented from going farther north by the Carquinas Strait. Following the bay around to the east, Phages group climbed the slopes of Mount Diablo and became the first Europeans to see the Sacramento-San Joaquin River Delta, the Central Valley of California and the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Seeing that it was impossible to cross the wide river without boats, the party looped around to return to San Jose through today's Contra Costa County roughly following today. SI-680 Highway, messengers from Monterey met the party during its return, informing Phages and Crespi of an emergency. The other Spanish colony, at San Diego, was suffering from severe food shortages. Crespi immediately set out with a pack train to deliver food, but this left Monterey also suffering. The Spaniards had not so far had much luck as hunters in California but, in desperation, Phages ordered that the soldiers set out in small parties to hunt the huge and fearsome California grizzly bear. Phages himself joined the hunt, and earned his nickname L. O's while hunting bears near San Luis Obispo. Phage's first tenure as commander in Monterey ended in 1774, after he quarreled with Father Junipero Serra, president of the Alta California missions. He was replaced as lieutenant governor by another veteran of the Portola expedition, Fernando Rivera y Moncada. In 1777, Phages was posted to Sonora to fight the Apaches, where he was promoted to lieutenant colonel. In 1781 he successfully quelled the Quechan Yuma Indian Revolt and temporarily reopened the Colorado River crossing of the Anza Trail at Yuma, Arizona. The Ketchin successfully re-closed the trail for the next 50-plus years after Phages and his troops departed, ensuring that the two journeys led by Juan Bautista de Anza were the first, last, and only Spanish expeditions ever to use the trail. Pedro Phages returned to Monterey in 1777, appointed governor of the Californias, replacing Felipe de Neve. Monterey replaced Loreto as the capital of the Californias in that year, the Loreto military governorship being replaced by a presidio commander and a civil administrator. In 1804, Las Californias was officially split into Alta California and Baja California. During Phage's second tenure as governor, two missions were founded, Mission Santa Barbara December 4, 1786, and La Parisima Mission December 8, 1787. Reporting on the Carmel Mission in 1787, Phages described the area's Indians as the laziest, most brutish and least rational of all the natives discovered between San Diego and San Francisco. He reckoned those qualities—along with the foggy and windy climate, shortage of potable water, high death rate, and language barriers— accounted for the painfully slow progress of Mission Carmel, concerned over the shortage of skilled artisans in his domain. Governor Phages proposed in 1787 that artisans imprisoned in Mexico City and Guadalajara have their sentences commuted to exile in California, provided they serve out their terms at presidios or missions and then stay on as settlers. New Spain's rulers did not act on Phages' proposal. Phages was promoted to colonel in 1789, and resigned his governorship in 1791, at the request of Father Serra. Pedro Phages moved back to Mexico City, where he died in 1794. <laughs> Tumultuous marriage Phages married Eulalia Francesca Josefa Callas on June 3, 1780 in Mexico City. Born October 4, 1758 in Barcelona, Spain, Eulalia was a full generation younger than Pedro Phages. She journeyed to Mexico City with her mother and brother to join her father Agustin Callas, captain of the Free Company of Volunteers of Catalonia formed to suppress rebellions by Pima and Seri Indians of Sonora. 
In 1781, Eulalia and Pedro traveled to Arispe, Sonora, where Eulalia gave birth to her first child, Pedrito. When Fages got reassigned to Alta California as governor in 1782, Eulalia and Pedrito remained in Sonora. Then they traveled to Baja California under military escort. Fages journeyed south to Loreto to pick them up. Departing Loreto in July, they arrived in Monterey in January 1783. In the spring of 1784 Pedro and Eulalia, now pregnant, traveled north—Eulalia being carried in a litter—to San Francisco. There they met up with Padre President Junipero Serra. Eulalia found the weather in San Francisco unpleasant and wanted to move to Santa Clara. Phages repeatedly asked the friars running Mission Santa Clara to grant Eulalia hospitality there. The friars, feeling it improper for them to host the pregnant Senora Gobernadora, feigned ignorance of Governor Phages insistent requests. They referred the matter to Padre Serra, who seconded their circumspect posture. So Eulalia's second child, Maria del Carmen, was born in San Francisco in August 1783. <laughs> but let a woman in your life after Eulalia returned to Monterey from San Francisco, she kept pressing her husband to give up his career in California and return to Mexico. Phages wanted to stay on as governor. After a series of quarrels, Eulalia broke off relations with Pedro. When Pedro seemed unfazed by the separation, Eulalia accused him of consorting with an Indian maidservant of their household. Threatening divorce, Eulalia left the house. In February 1785, Phages sought the advice of the friars at Mission Carmel. Friar Matias de Santa Catalina Noriega concluded that Eulalia still had the obligation to live with her husband and tried to persuade her to reunite with Pedro. Eulalia refused, and appealed her case to the bishop. When Phages returned from a trip to Baja California, during which time Eulalia lived at Mission Carmel, she finally agreed to move back into her husband's house. In August 1785, aging friar Francisco Palo arrived at Monterey from Mission Santa Clara, planning to return to Mexico and retire. Phages confided to Palo that Eulalia still felt unhappy in his house and still wanted to return to Mexico. He asked Palo to escort Eulalia as far as Guadalajara. Palo objected that it would be improper for him, a missionary, to escort any woman, even the governor's wife. Instead, Palo spent a whole day trying to dissuade Eulalia from going to Mexico, pointing out all the hardships the trip would entail. Eulalia finally relented and agreed to stay in Monterey. Apparently dissatisfied with that resolution, Phages threw bureaucratic obstacles in the way of Palo boarding the ship that would carry him to Mexico, delaying Palo's departure until November. Topic reconciliation Topic In January 1787, Phages wrote a letter to Padre Palo, in which he reported, About six months ago Eulalia suddenly called me one morning with a thousand protests, tears, and humility and asked my pardon for all the past. She voluntarily confessed that everything had been a pretense and falsehood and that she herself had bribed the Indian girl to take part in the plot. Thank God we are now living in union and harmony. Topic fictional portrayals Topic The novel Mistress of Monterey, a story of lost romance in 18th century California by Virginia Stivers Bartlett 1933, reprinted by Event Horizon Press, draws a psychological portrait of Eulalia Callas in her mercurial relationship with her husband Pedro Fages. Bartlett also sets the tensions between Eulalia and Pedro within the complex interplay between Spanish military officers and Franciscan missionaries in Alta California. Pedro Fages appears as a minor character in the 1955 film Seven Cities of Gold, which presents a fanciful and historically inaccurate account of the founding of Spanish California. Lieutenant Fages is played by Mexican actor Victor Junco. In the credits, Fage's name is misspelled as Faces. Governor Fages and his wife make a brief appearance in the Isabel Allende novel Zorro. Per Fages is the protagonist of the historical novel La Ultima Conquista 2005 by Ramon Villaro and is a secondary character in Los Acasos 2010 by Javier Pascual. Topic references topic topic Source topic Bancroft, Hubert Howe 1884. The History of California, Volume 1, 1542 to 1800. San Francisco, A. L. Bancroft and Company. B.B. Rose Marie Senkowitz, Robert M. 2015. Junipero Serra, California Indians and the Transformation of a Missionary. University of Oklahoma Press. 
Phages, Pedro, Priestley, Herbert Ingram A Historical, Political, and Natural Description of California. University of California Press. Geiger, Maynard J. The Life and Times of Fray Junipero Serra, OFM 2 volume, Washington, D.C. Academy of American Franciscan History. Ives, Ronald L. From Pittock to San Gabriel in 1782, The Journey of Don Pedro Phages. The Journal of Arizona History. 9 2022-244. Nuttall, Donald Pedro Phages and the Advance of the Northern Frontier of New Spain, 1767-1782 PhD. USC. Nuttall, Donald Light Cast Upon Shadows, The Non-California Years of Don Pedro Phages. California Historical Quarterly. 56 250-269. Nuttall, Donald A. The Senores Gobernadores of Spanish Alta California A Comparative Study. Pedro Phages. 1936. Dictionary of American Biography, Charles Scribner's Sons. Sanchez, Joseph P. 2008. Phages, Pedro. 1734-1794. Encyclopedia of Latin American History and Culture, Charles Scribner's Sons. External links Topic. Media related to Pedro Phages at Wikimedia Commons Michael R. Hardwick, "'Pedro Phages, Military Governor of Alta California, 1770–1774 and 1782–1791'' 1. Pedro Phages and Miguel Costanzo, Two Early Letters from San Diego in 1769 2 Journal of San Diego History, Vol. 21, No. 2, Spring 1975. Translated and edited by Iris Wilson Engstrand. Expedition to San Francisco Bay in 1770, Diary of Pedro Phages, 3 Herbert Eugene Bolton, Translator and Annotator. University of California at Berkeley, 1911. Presents Phage's original diary in Spanish alongside the English translation. Eulalia Francesca Josefa Callis Phages. 4. 